I started the freeze dryer to pre-cool about an hour and a quarter ago. Uh, the trays are down to negative 5 and the barrel, the thermometer underneath, is already negative 40. So it's more than cold enough to get things in. So we'll get the food on the trays and get them in there. This time it'll be rice and some Costco rotisserie chicken that I shredded and then added taco seasoning. So we had that for dinner a couple of times and made a couple of batches of it. And then the, the chicken bones and things, they roasted in the oven and then made a broth out of it and then cooked the rice in it. So it's a nice uh, chicken flavored rice and then the taco seasoned shredded chicken. So we'll get those on the trays and get them in here. And they're still in the little pans right now because I didn't take them out yet. So let's get to it. So tray one, as I said before I started the recording because I forgot again, I've got uh, four pans of rice, so four pounds of rice cooked with the chicken broth. And I only have one of the stainless steel rods so far in the rice because uh, I only made two of these so far. They look like they're going to work out well. So I got the little plastic piece under there and I did remember to spray this with the cooking spray this time so it does come out. Now I can get the weight on that, 1661. And then the thermometer will take its place. Okay. And now that is ready for the freeze dryer. Tray two essentially the same thing except for this one won't have a thermometer because I didn't uh, make enough of those pieces yet and I'm not going to drill today. And I really only need one or two thermometers per batch to tell me what I'm after. Especially if I put it in the bottom tray, tray four spot, because then it's the coldest spot it's the one that re-chills the fastest. So it's the most important one to know the temperature. Okay, 15 or 16.50. And tray three. And the trays are nice and cold also because I had those in the freezer. We'll move on to the, the shredded chicken. This was Costco rotisserie chicken. Oh, well, you just saw that. No, you didn't. I didn't show putting it in the pans. So I took Costco rotisserie chicken, pulled it off the bones, shredded it, and then it added taco seasoning, um, which we had for dinner a couple of times. So and I have one of them with the stainless steel rod. And this was a suggestion by a viewer. To, and so I wouldn't have to drill the food. I could just put a rod in it, freeze it, and then pull the rod out, which works out well if I remember to spray it with the cooking spray. And then put the thermometer in, but I'll wait until I get the final weights. I do have a half, half pans of this one, unlike the rice. And the weight on that one, 1865. And then I can put the thermometer in that pre-made hole. That's pretty sweet. It works out pretty well. And tray four. And by doing them this way, of course, I already have them pre-measured one pound and half pound increments. And it works equally well if you do 400 grams and 200 grams or just two 500 gram blocks and just don't leave the center one at all. Just put them together. Uh, that seems to be about the right load for a medium freeze dryer. And I won't have a thermometer for this one because I didn't put the hole in it and I'm not going to drill. Those are ready for the freeze dryer. Let's get them over there. So this will give us nine pounds. Yes, this will give us nine pounds of food on the trays. So we've got four pounds of the rice cooked in chicken broth. And then the five pounds of shredded chicken cooked with taco seasoning. Okay, load those in there starting at the bottom. Uh, the thermometer in the chicken shows zero degrees and the one in the rice is showing about 10 degrees right now. And I should mention we've got a complete ring around the seal right now. The fact that it was pre-chilled as soon as I closed it, the, the warm air that just rushed in there 
started to condense and pulls a little bit of a vacuum and so it helps keep that door closed against the seal. So those will be done in about two days. Don't go away, it'll take just a second. Batch 604 is almost done according to the machine. It's only been 32 hours and that might seem like a long time but I thought the previous batch, and, and I don't have the notes right here, they're upstairs, I thought the previous batch took at least 37 hours. Only has about 20 more minutes on the timer and then it'll be time to take it out and check the weight and then put it back in there to make sure that it's dry. So we're going to go ahead and bypass those last few minutes, get them out and weigh them and get them back in. So I'll use the down arrow and bypass the rest of the time. I'll open the drain valve and take out tray one. Very, very toasty. It says 115, but it feels warmer than that on the tray. Oh, 1066. And I'm going to switch that one with tray two. Tray two also feels nice and toasty. 1049. And we'll put these back up and switch them. So I'll put tray two on the very top. And tray one will come down a spot. Okay, tray three. And that says it's over 125 degrees, maybe 128, and it's extremely toasty. 1098. Tray four. And you can definitely see the different batches of taco seasoning that I put in. 1117. Okay, we'll switch those. And tray four, I'll put up one. And that one's definitely cooler than the others were. We'll get that closed back up and restarted. So with those back in there and switched positions, I've got the drain valve closed. Now we'll restart it and give it a couple more hours for the dry check. Okay, add more dry time continue and it's cool enough because the fans on it I had already added more time to this batch earlier today even before it finished uh, without stopping it or checking it because there was no need because it said that it only had a couple hours to go but one of the thermometers was still in the 50s it can't be done at that time when it's heating and it's still only up to 50. At least I've never had one yet that didn't lose more weight as it went from 50 to 120. Okay, we'll be back in a couple hours to check it. We're down to the last four or five minutes of the dry check. Uh, that means on this machine with this software, the heaters have been off for about 11 minutes already, so it's starting to cool. But they're still nice and toasty. The bottom tray is still 110 degrees. That's good. The top tray is over 120 degrees. Great. So we'll bypass the rest of the time, get them out, and check them. And hopefully they're done so I can get them bagged before bedtime. Open the drain valve. Okay, so let's make sure the scale is cleared. All right. Tray one. Let's check the others, see if there's any differences. Okay, tray two, no change. Tray three, make sure that it's not touching, of course. No change. Tray four, and again, make sure it's not touching. We're going to stop the machine with no defrost button. Make it much quieter. We'll get the little defrost baffle in there and the fan on the door. And I'll wait to turn this on until we're finished with the bagging so we don't have to listen to the fan. Now get the thermometer out from underneath. It's stuck in the ice and it was negative 20. Okay. And the ice isn't high enough to make a dam that I have to worry about water coming out. So that's good. Take the thermometers out of those two and get the final weights of everything, which won't change on those two. And then we'll get them bagged by the pound because I plan on putting one pound in each bag basically. Let's get the thermometers out. Find out what they weigh now. 1057 grams now. 
So it started at 1661. It lost over 600 grams for those two blocks. 1049. 1090. 11, 16. Now, I'm going to start with the rice ones. So each one of these blocks of rice was one pound. And you can see that this one looks a little bit different than those. just because this is from a different batch. My thought is I'm going to put these... I'm going to check these to see if they've come apart easy. Some of the rices that I make, it depends on how thick and sticky the chicken broth is. Sometimes it's a very thick chicken broth because there's lots and lots of chicken bits left in it. Uh, so it makes it ends up with a very thick flavorful broth, but it doesn't come apart very well. The rice sticks together. So I'm going to put it in a bag so I don't lose it and see if this batch comes apart. That comes apart pretty easily, which means it'll be easy to get it into one of the Mylar bags. For the bags of rice, I have the batch number on the bag and then a little printed tag with what's in it. The batch number, what it is, the date it went into the freeze dryer, what it weighed before, and then how much water is needed, which I need to finish calculating it out so that I know. But I can just put these on the scale because I know that each one of these was one pound before it went in there. So I can just put it in the bag, put it on the scale, uh, tear out the bag, and I'll know how much water it needs. So that's the way I'm going to handle this set. So just kind of gently break the pieces of rice apart because of course I don't want to powder the individual grains of rice. I want them to stay nice and whole so when I rehydrate them I have rice and not rice flour. Of course I don't think rice flour is made from cooked rice but it would still be a powder and I don't want that. I, I want them to just be individual grains. Yeehaw! Okay well let's see if this will fit in there okay. All right, so I'll shake it down just a little bit and then that'll fit. And then I can put it on the scale and I know it was about 453 grams before. So it's a, just under 310 grams. And to make sure that I don't, so I don't put too much water to begin with, I'm just going to round it down to just 300 grams. Now do the same thing for the other three blocks. Oops, that one's already coming apart. And that's good. It's what I want to see. I want to see them coming apart easily. And again, shake it a little bit to get them down in there. So I'm just trying to just gently squeeze them to uh, kind of coax the grains of rice apart without breaking things up. And I'm getting this stuff bagged quickly. It's still warm right now. Now we'll get the rest of the weights on those. So just under 300, so about 300 still. So I don't know how much these will come apart, so let's give a test. And I'm going to go ahead and use the same bag that I used with the rice because I don't think it's going to hurt anything to have a little bit in there. And I'm hoping to get them in the quart bag still. So I'm going to go ahead and just scoop one of these up. And let's see what that does. That comes apart quite easily. And of course I don't want to powder the bits of uh, shredded chicken. I just want to break it up enough that it's going to fit in the bag. So I think that'll do it. I don't think I have to do anything more than that. I'll get these bags labeled and be right back again. So I'm going to use the scoop on this and kind of pour that onto there. I should have thought about this ahead of time. This is where the big canning funnel would work well, I think, which I do have, but it's not down here. Okay, definitely have to kind of shake that down, maybe squish it down a little bit. So I might be better off not breaking them apart. So we'll try that on the next one. 
but it does fit. Got one pound in there. I need about 300 grams of water back in these also. I'm going to try these two little half ones, see if I can get those both in there without crushing them up so much. Maybe that will actually work better for this size bag. Uh, usually if we want to put the big things in there without crushing them, we'll go for the, the two quart bag so that it'll just slip in there. But you still have to break them in half, you know, so they have to be the half block. So let's just see if this will slip in there. Okay, that actually works pretty nicely. That'll fit. I'm going to use the flexible cutting board and just kind of slide those in there. Now I need to get these last bits in there. That stuff's delicious. So close enough to 300 grams. So I'm just going to use 300 grams still. I'll get the other ones bagged and we'll be back. So I've got five bags of the shredded chicken with the taco seasoning and four bags of the rice. Each bag was one pound and that's one pound of wet weight. That's not what it weighs now. Um, so when I talk about the weight of the food, I'm almost always talking about when I'm talking about how much is in a bag, I'm almost always talking about the wet weight of it, not what it weighs now. So I'll add 300 cc oxygen absorbers and get these things closed and then sealed. I'll add an oxygen absorber by slipping it down the side so that it doesn't end up in the zipper or in the seal area. And I'll get these closed as quickly as possible to make sure that uh, it's not I'm trying to absorb all the air all the oxygen out of the air around them. When you're not here for me to make a video, I don't move the sealer over here to the middle of the, the work surface. I leave it over on the side next to the dangerous uh, precipice edge, which I have added a block so I can't accidentally push the sealer off the table again. So, but you're here, so I move it over here so you can see it. Now I'm going to hit that first bag twice as high up on the top as I can to make sure that it's all toasty warm. The, the sealers that Harvest Right, um, the sealer that my sister got from Harvest Right has a silicone piece underneath this heat strip. And so it's not trying to heat up the whole metal piece. This one has to heat up a bigger area. That's why I do it twice is to make sure that it's up to temperature. And so you can feel it getting nice and toasty. I'm getting this sealed as high up on the bag as possible to make sure that if I mess it up or I get a bad seal, it gets a fold in it, whatever, I've got room for two or three more tries down lower before I get to the zipper. And that would also let you cut the top of the bag off if you were careful. Instead of using the tear strip, you could use a scissors or knife and cut it right below the seal. And I notice I've got this one at an angle, so I'm going to reseal this because I only have about four millimeters of the five millimeter seal at this end. That's not enough. I want the full five. And if you have one of the new sealers, uh, that if it's working, you might have an eight millimeter wide seal. And of course you can get a 10 millimeter wide out of this one by simply doing it twice right next to each other. And I have done that. Now I'm adding the gross weight to each bag, 168 grams. And that way, if water moisture starts getting in the bag, if I damage the bag, if it's a bad bag, I'll be able to tell early by weighing it because it will get heavier if moisture starts going in there. So this weighs 185 grams and 1% of the moisture, uh, well with the contents, it'd be about 170. So it'd add about 1.7 grams per percent of moisture. So if this goes up about mm, one and a half or so percent um, 
grams, they don't know that that much moisture is going through the bag and there's something wrong with the bag. It's got a pinhole, it's a defective bag, there's something wrong with it. And if it's going up and down and showing two numbers, I'll take the higher number. So as soon as these are done, we'll move over to the storage area and find out where these are going to be. I still have four more bins, the big bins, uh, that we've emptied in the past uh, over the last few years where we've put food in then taken them out. We have four bins that are empty out of these first 40. And then I still have another rack behind that with another another set of bins. I think eight more bins. I think it has four more little and four more big. But the big ones are already filled back there. So I just have four little bins back there. So I don't have a lot of space. I'm going to have to expand out pretty soon. But as we learned from the 50 batch series, one of these big tubs will easily hold six, seven, sometimes more batches, depending on how big the food is, how much of a bag it needs. But anyway, this bin only has one batch in it from previous. Uh, so we'll put more in this one. And then as soon as the freeze dryer is defrosted and ready to go, which will be tomorrow morning, we'll get another batch going. So I'll get those in there and, whoa, let's see, what do I have in there? Corn. That was the frozen corn from an earlier one. So as soon as I get these all done, we'll move on and see you on the next batch. I'd love to take some of this stuff camping. That gets written down on the, our data sheet and then we transfer that into the computer in our database so we can find the stuff again. So we can sort by location, uh, which bin it's in, the date that it was made, or the food. So we can sort it pretty much any way we want and find anything we down. We can narrow it down to a bin. We don't necessarily know how deep it is in the bin, but we know it's in a bin. And usually that's worked out well for us. Until the next video, thanks for watching.